Uh, any additions or changes to the agenda? Yes. Okay. Um, I, I got. I, I've lost my picture, but um, um, just a, a little discussion to tap our creativity about what a five hundred thousand dollar emergency plan for the state might look like, and is there any way um, that the CUDs can help structure that and perhaps tap some of certainly some of the product of that? Um, but a part of H nine sixty six, which passed is $500,000 for an emergency plan to be done by December. Um, so anyway, just think, anyway, put on the agenda just for a little bit of, of idea exchange. All right, sounds good. I, I'm gonna put that at the end. Uh, anything else that we have um, additions or changes? I would like to, um, if we can, I would like to move the two items for reaching out to incumbent providers, the seven o'clock item and the 715 item, and move them up a little bit, um, move them to the front. And the reason is, um, I actually, I'm, I'm kind of double booked on this. I'm gonna be attending a phone conference with the select board in Washington with uh, EC Fiber as well. And I need to uh, go and get on that conference around 645. So, um, uh, I don't see my uh, trusty vice chair. He said he had a select board meeting of his own that he was going to be going from that to this one. So if, um, when I need to go, David, I'm gonna make you the organizer presenter, if you could chair, that would be terrific. And if nobody else has any object objections, because these, uh, these agenda items you know, came out of your committee. So I'd like you to, uh, you can drive those anyways. Okay, uh, let's see, public comment. Any public comment? Okay. So uh, next item that we have, uh, reaching out to incumbent providers about cooperating. Uh, Ken, you want to uh, lead on this one? Um, I guess I, I really engage myself here. That was um, that was your motion, wasn't it? They they all were. Yeah. Um, so. We need I'm trying, trying to lay out in my mind here what these next few months look like. Um, but it's it's possible that that in the next few months we may actually establish some new internet abilities for people within our district. And we know that that we don't have we don't want to be operating a, an ISP at this point. So how do we move forward to identify? Let, let's let's say we let's say we have new um, uh, fixed wireless capacity for folks. Um, how do we find partners to go to provide that service to those newly newly connected folks? Um, so, and therefore, for us, what mechanism do we use to to really firm up the discussions with potential partners? And just for everybody's information, I I posted the motion and the um, the, the minutes, uh, thank you, Jeremy, for taking those minutes, um, putting those uh, that discussion into the chat. If you want to go and see what Ken actually moved and what we were um, what we were talking about. So the I, I think yeah, the, the basic idea was that we won't, we were going to send uh, in some some capacity. We were going to send a an email or make phone calls or make some contacts to all of the incumbent providers within our member communities and say, hey, um, given that there's all this funding, let's, um, you know, how can we work together? And I think Siobhan, you had a turn of phrase that was that was nice, like cooperative, something, something. But uh, yeah, how can we cooperate, get people served? Um, and, and like, yeah, my, and I'm, sorry, um, I'm sorry, I, I did miss, uh, miss a part of that. Um, another reason for doing this, that was one part, but probably the most primary reason for doing this is that because of H966, um, other providers may be doing some expansion work within our area. Um, and, and there may be some that we can have fruitful partnerships. And I know that one we've had a discussion about the possibility is, is Waitsfield um, Champlain, 
they have part of more town um, that maybe they do a fiber extension and you know maybe that works for us but it is to establish so it's not just the operations of an isp but it's but it's just to put out the, the word to to others that may be pursuing funds from the state to do some expansion work and it would it, part it would be nice for us to hear about it beforehand and part it would be nice for them to recognize that there's potential partnership um and i'll say kind of the the, the darker side is that uh, Commissioner Tierney said Comcast is ready to work with the CUDs, and that would that we should at least tempt see if there's anything there that's of value. And so I, I doubt they're going to be sending us a note. So this is another way of of priming that discussion too. And if it doesn't happen, it doesn't happen. But we can communicate back to the Public Service Department that that would be challenging for some of those partnerships. That, Right, so um, I see some commentary from Ray. He uh, posts in the chat, are any of them bidding RDOF? And then he says, Comcast and Transvideo will see us as competitors, and they and they will. But the, I think the way Siobhan put it in the in the minutes is that this gives us the moral high ground that we said we we approach them, we want to talk to them about you know what their plans are, and if they go and apply for some of this state money, that we can at least, um, if we want to say no, that we have some reasonable. Um, you know, we've sort of done the legwork to say, how can we do this in a collabor collaborative way? My um, my reluctance in the minutes was, I'm not sure that this buys us anything. I mean, all of the incumbent providers know that we exist. Um, some of them are, you know, willing to participate. Some of them are not. Um, so what is the what does this give us? And yeah, I'm not I'm not 100% sure. Uh, aside from that, uh, like what Siobhan says, the moral high ground, you know, if we need to say no to a line extension, um, that's probably what it gets us. Um, Ray's question, if they're bidding RDOF, that's something that's on the on the next agenda item that I definitely want to come back to. Um, that quiet period doesn't start, and please correct me if I'm wrong, folks who are engaged in this process, that doesn't actually start until the 15th. So we could at least have a conversation before then, but then they still might be reluctant to talk anyways. But uh, uh, my suggestion to the Business Development Committee was that we come back to the whole board and just get a sense of where you'd like us to go. Do you want to do this this step of reaching out to the incumbents, or what do you think? But Jeremy, right. I've had one thing, if I can. Sure, go ahead, Jerry. You know, m maybe an initial foray to see if they if if anybody is interested in talking with us. I, I agree with you 100%. They know we're here. And they haven't reached out to us, but I, I think it would be appropriate for us to reach out to them and and see what comes of that. Not that we need to pursue them in the way that we've pursued WEC, because we know that this relationship is super important. But I, I don't think it would. I don't see it being a bad idea to just reach out and see what we get. Okay. Thanks, Jerry. Ray. So does this have to do with the $11 million that was in the bill set aside for the ISPs to extend? Yes. Okay. Yes. So, so um, the, the, the idea is that the CUDs have a bit of veto power to it, that money. Exactly. And so um, I've already, I sent an email off to George Goodrich at Transvideo and said, I want to call your attention to this provision in the bill. And I wanted to make sure that you were aware of it so that you could take advantage of it. Okay, and he said, thanks a lot. We, were, we are keeping informed of this. They must not be the only ones. They must have their own little association that's keeping them informed. Mm -hmm. And as long as it has this little provision with regard to you have to collaborate with or get the approval of the CUDs or something like that, why do this? They'll be back in touch with us if they need it. I, I'd prefer not to do anything further than you know what I just did was call their attention to it, period. Yeah, so, and, and you know, and in the case, th thanks for doing that, Ray, and in the case of Transvideo, I, I've also talked to George before, back probably a, a year ago or so, and uh, I should also clarify that the, the recent bill that passed actually struck the language giving the CUDs direct veto power, but the veto power instead goes to the, the commissioner of DPS, and she has the ability to uh, approve or not approve 
in consultation with the CUD. And she said to the legislature that she would give um, deference to the CUD's opinion about this. And she said explicitly that she's willing to kind of be the bad guy and say, no, if we say that it's something that we don't want to do, she's willing to be that, um, you know, to, to give us that sort of cover. So I see Alan and then Siobhan. Go ahead, Alan. You, you're still muted, would Alan. It be, <clears throat> would it make sense go. to table this motion for the moment until we, no, I'm not, okay? Yeah. I think I'm yeah, having yeah. problems on my end. So if I if you can't hear me, can you wave or something? <clears throat> okay, thanks. Might it be um, in order to uh, move that maybe we table a discussion about this item until we've had the RDOF discussion? It seems to me we're going to get into maybe more b background that would help us to better understand the second question of reaching out to other telecoms. I'm not making the motion now. I'm just asking if that might be a good thing to do. That's all. Okay, My turn. that seems, yep, that seems sensible. Uh, go ahead, Siobhan. So a couple of things. One, this is separate from RDOF. This is not, this is not RDOF, this is state money. Um, the other thing is, I'm not sure, it, this is not the best analogy that I'm gonna come up with, but it's what popped into my head while we're having this discussion. I don't know how much bullying y'all went through in school. But one of the questions that the people in authority often asked when you try to complain about this kind of thing is, well, did you tell them you don't like it? And that's where I'm coming at with this is it's, we're telling them we want to work with them. And then if they choose not to work with us, we can say to the state, well, we tried and they aren't working with us. And so their plans are now gonna trample all over everything we've been trying to accomplish. Veto that, you know, that's, that gives us a lever. But if we don't make that initial attempt, it gives them plausible deniability to say, well, we didn't know we were gonna trample on them. You know, even though technically we're all aware of each other and they're, they're big people and they could figure this out, it's denying them plausible uh, deniability is, is the way I see it. And it doesn't cost us anything to do this, but it could gain us with the state authorities. And so that's, that's my thinking on it, but I am not utterly married to the idea of doing this. I'm just why I'm leaning on one side versus the other. Any other thoughts? So we have a, a suggestion that we table this until we talk about the RDOF stuff. I'm, I'm happy just to sort of kind of sloppily segue into that and then we'll kind of go back to this. We don't have to be, um, you know, abide by the agenda so uh, strictly. So is that amenable to everybody if we start talking about the next item, the RDOF one? Greg, you wanna take a crack one, at it? Well, yes, one last thing I just wanted to find out uh, Ken, did you say it was five hundred thousand dollars? Well, this is a that's a, di a different topic. The the department has five hundred thousand dollars for planning that must be completed by the end of December, and it's emergency planning. It's supposed to be how do you provide service in the very short term uh, to address the COVID emergency. So that that's a that's that's not going to be paying any of the incumbents money to do work. It's really just to lay out what is necessary, maybe um, better understand coverage. Um, I, I don't know. Uh, and, and I'm not sure they know either, to be honest. So it's not money to actually be building and providing service to anybody. That's correct. That's that's okay. at least 11 million. Um, and there's also the cable line extension. Um, yeah, so it, it's, well north of $10 million that is available for actual construction work. Okay, and I so, think so we would want to be uh, at the table, so to speak, in this planning, you know, on our input to be had. So, yep, there's there's that topic too. Again, as a big Venn diagram, there's a lot of overlap in a lot of these discussions. 
Okay, so let's let's circle back around to a more of a discussion about that plan and what uh, what DPS is doing with that. Um, do we want to? Um, yeah, let's let's talk about let's talk about Ardoff. And I see Jerry put in chat that he concurs with Siobhan about this that that we need to be on record to have attempted um, a conversation with the, the IS, other ISPs out there. Um, so the issues with discussing RDOF plans in public session, uh, Michael, could I have you talk about this briefly? Because you sent a, um, a pretty clear email earlier. Would you be willing to uh, say something? Sure. Thank sure. you. Um, so the FCC is trying to protect all the bidders from other bidders cheating in the auction by colluding together, by figuring out how to divide what's going to be bid upon to, to, to share strategies, to figure out, share costs, to do all kinds of things that would give them a leg up on other bidders. And they've taken this stance in many auctions in the past and other, other actions that they pursue. And so they have very clear rules um, called prohibited uh, communications anti-collusion rules that um, regulate how all bidders behave. And the important thing to understand is that no two bidders can share any notes whatsoever about where they're going to bid, how much they would spend, any of their strategies anything in that regard. It's, there's a long list actually. And that includes sharing it with someone who might be a neutral party who is in a position to then share it with the next bidder. And so that, that, that neutral party is called a conduit. And so we have to avoid conduits. So we, as a member of the consortium, are a bidder. There's only one bidder. The NRTC is the bidder on behalf of us, but we are all as if we are a bidder. And so we, as a bidder, cannot communicate anything about our strategy, even, even what state we're bidding in, and not be revealed. That's kind of laughable, but it applies to national, national bidders who are going to choose which states to go to and otherwise. So that you can't share anything. So we have to be careful that we don't share information inadvertently through a conduit. So that brings us to not being able to tell government officials what we're doing, not being able to tell lawyers who represent other bidders what we're doing, not being able to speak to consultants who might represent other bidders, not being able to speak publicly as we do in every meeting because anybody can access our public meeting and therefore discern what we're thinking of doing. Um, and there are other examples, but I, I think I've gotten the point across that in general, this all has to be done very discreetly. Um, in our case, within our consortium and even within our consortium, the individual organizations that are in the consortium may have to firewall off certain individuals from the rest of the organization so that it can be controlled well. If the FCC determines or even suspects or somebody informs the FCC that there's been any communication that is in violation of these rules, the FCC feels it has no choice but to come down really hard they will throw you out of the auction. They will fine you. If you have FCC licenses, they might revoke them. It's really draconian. And they want it to be so that people are scared enough to follow the rules. And, you know, obviously it's possible to cheat. It's possible to work out, you know, wink, wink, nod, nudge, nudge kind of arrangements. But it's really risky to do that. And it's basically patently unfair. And so, uh, I guess my conclusion is we can't talk about any art off strategy, where we're going to bid, where we're not in our public meetings at all. We cannot share it with 
are consultants until there's some kind of legal arrangement made to protect that information from going to another bidder. We can't share it with an attorney, all of these different kinds, and we can't share it with the Department of Public Service. All of our friends there want to help us. We can't tell them. And because they all can serve as conduits. So I, I think so the conversation I had with my dentist this afternoon about the while we were waiting for the Novocaine to take effect, I'm talking about CV fiber and how we were hoping to work with trans video and there's this federal bid thing that we're looking at and all of this, that that would be wrong. Don't do that because he after, lives in Northfield and he knows July the family. 15. I'm sorry, go ahead. Because he lives in Northfield again. and he knows the family and he could have a conversation with them and not even, okay. I'm just making sure I understand the point. Oh. So no officially, officially, the quiet period begins on July 15th. Uh, some interpret it as the day that your application is submitted, which can be before July 15th. Um, the NRTC officials are assuming that it already started. And so th there are different people who interpret that differently. But obviously, if, it, if you're giving information that's going to get back to somebody who will then use that information, that's a violation of the spirit, if not the rule of July 15th. Alan? So, Michael, I have a question. When you said we, as a board, can't talk about these issues, does that mean even in executive session we're prohibited from talking about these issues? No. No. I, I, the, the problem Jeremy raised in our business development committee meeting was we weren't sure what provision we can use to call executive session in order to talk about such a thing. But there's no reason you couldn't in executive session discuss it because now you're only telling yourself something and that's allowed. Yeah, I'm able to find competitive disadvantage. Yeah, well, it seems to me if, if the federal government is telling you you can't talk publicly about this, that's I'm not even sure you'd need an exemption <laughs> from the I, I Vermont Public it. Records Act for that. Yeah. But I, I don't know that. That's an interesting question. No, yeah, but Jeremy raised it last meeting and we were going to check it out. But yeah, I, well, I'm, I'm pretty sure we safe grounds calling executive session. We, yeah, we want to make yeah, sure, sure that we've we that we've yeah. crossed that T because there are potential parties out there watching our public broadcasts who might sure. Paul Fowle oh, could, could and, I, and cross the T's. Jeremy, but can I, I take guess, a moment of privilege that ever, most people don't know yet that um, Cloud Alliance joined the NRTC consortium. So that means that CV Fiber discussing these things with me in the room is not a violation because I'm one of us. So that's important to know. Okay, so moving back to the main discussion. Um, I guess I can answer more questions, but I, I, I think it's so fairly obvious at this point. I, 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 I think we can, we may be able to get around having to worry about the public, um, public records of meetings rules. Um, I have a, a suggestion. I don't know that this is the best option. <clears throat> what if we just had two people or a handful of people, and they were just the designated RDOF people? Because I mean, this is going to be getting into the weeds. And you know, is it the, is it the sort of thing that our bid really needs to be discussed among the entire governing board? Uh, maybe, maybe that we go and in, go into executive session. But does it make more sense just to take uh, two or three people and not make a committee? Just say these are the people that are um, allowed to um, do the RDOF negotiations, work with NRTC, and go from there. And it just and we just report back the bids are in we can talk again but again firewalling off those folks um and giving them the authority to um navigate the the, the bureaucracy of the process your thoughts can about I respond that? to that please um, I, I think that that is probably the best way to do it but not the i don't know what the adjective is i would rather that the board be informed. I think the board members want to know what's going on. And I don't think the board, the whole board needs to know 
what number we're bidding down to and no lower, that sort of thing, or which specific census block groups we're bidding on. But I think the board's going to want to know, are we bidding on massive amounts of block groups, or are we being selective based on the different um, blue and orange and salmon groups? Or, you know, how, I, I think everyone's entitled to know at least that general stuff, and even that is prohibited information to share publicly. So I would say, yeah, probably we want to have two or three or four people who get into the deep weeds on it about, you know, strategy and how much money for each block is, is too little to take and things like that. But in general, I think it should still be open to the board. I think I have a middle yeah. ground. Oh. So, so go, go ahead, Jer Alan, then Ken, then David. So Jeremy, what your suggestion suggesting would be parallel maybe, tell me if I'm wrong, but it would be parallel to us hiring a contractor to do the art off work for us, going through the bidding process and so forth. And then those people who are actually involved in it uh, as our representatives are reporting back to us as a board and what's going on. The difference with what you've sketched out is we we haven't contracted with anybody to do this work, so we're going to have to figure out a way to do it within, but create some sort of um, some sort of uh, a, a group of people with expertise and the ability to talk among themselves without having the whole board to be involved. Is that is that accurate? Yes. Thank you. Okay. I agree with that too. Uh, yeah, my middle my middle ground is I think it might be appropriate to have a small group of CV Fiber be involved in 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 designing what CV Fiber's perspective is in the bidding process, not have the full board be a part of that discussion because it's kind of bulky discussion and and hard to contain. But that small body then works with the consortium during those those meetings to make sure that our our interests are represented as they develop as the overall body develops its its strategy and then the results of that then come back to the full board so you're aware of what's going on and and through the full board can provide a little bit of directional support to the small body but but a lot of the the discussion about strategy might be among a very small number of people rather than the full board david yeah, and my only comment, I mean, I, I agree with what's just been discussed, but my, I want to come back to the other um, motion that was on the floor. Does that motion get caught up in the RDOF process? Michael? Wait, do we have, we have a motion on the floor? Well, the recommendation about communicating with the other, uh, you know, part, potential partners. Oh, okay. I, th I thought it, I was worried that I missed a formal motion. Okay. No, no. There is a recommendation from the business committee to do this. That's why it's right. But, but, so my question here is, does Adolf impact that discussion? I don't think so. Yeah, I, I think there's, we can send a letter to these places saying, we want to work with you relating to the state grants and the extension of cable services, blah, 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 without ever mentioning RDOF. I don't think they have I, to be related. Well, so if we get into where we would like to work, though, wouldn't that be a problem? Our, <laughs> our members are public knowledge. That's so so uh, on the other hand, there's, all, there's this notion of conflict of interest, and then there's the difference between a real and a, and a perceived conflict of interest and as a public entity we always have to be aware that a perceived public uh, a perceived conflict of interest can be just as bad so if we're having phone calls and we're talking to provider x and that just looks it just looks bad so i think we we probably could before july 15th and just say you know if you are um yeah, I, I don't know. Or their their attorneys might say, no, we're not talking to them about anything because, you know, we're also going to be bidding. So uh, I, I, don't, don't. I don't see any value in asking any entity whether they're, I mean, we're all allowed to state we're, we've applied, we've filled out the short form and we're, we are eligible to bid. 
and we can ask any other entity if they're in that. That's about as far as they can go. So I don't see particular value in asking around. I don't think it was asking around. I think it was, does the fact that we say we might be interested in working with you in the future, does that violate RDOF just in and of itself? No. no. Because there's plenty of other census block groups to serve other ways and without those funds. And we're, we already have a plan that did not include RDOF in the plan, really. It, it was aware of RDOF eligible blocks, but that plan is not targeted at RDOF necessarily. So I, 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 it's fine to talk to anybody about building whatever, as long as we're not talking about the auction. Okay, so. That seems a little bit counter to what you said before, where we couldn't even talk about what state well, I guess what state we might be bidding in, but it's right. like, it seemed, you know, I, I glanced through that sheet and it said pretty clearly that, you know, any discussion of where even you might be building might be, I mean, not related to, I, I, I yeah, okay. I guess you know more about it than I do, but. Well, that's right. pretty I mean, that, that's the subtle, like <laughs> you're realizing the subtlety of it and how the perceptions, like Jeremy was talking about, conflicts of interest and just perceptions of conflicts of interest, it can get there. And so it, everyone should be cautious, but you are definitely allowed to discuss normal business, which includes for us construction and design. Ray? Yeah, so I think I recall that we had a fairly lengthy conversation about releasing business plan, financial plan, et cetera. Uh, because we were concerned about others finding out what our what our plans were and how people might come in and cherry pick our subscribers, where they thought they they could uh, get some uh, get some revenue from it. Um, the ISPs aren't going to trust us. We go to them and say we'd love to help. Is there some way we can cooperate? And they're thinking, um, why? Um, it, at the end of the day, people will be making a decision between CV Fiber and the incumbent ISP. Do you think they really want to trust us? It's like we're asking for their business plan. I don't care what they think. I care what the state thinks. This I isn't for. It's, it's. I care what they think. But the state's the one that's going to be approving or disapproving grants for certain activities. And so there's kind of a purse string there that they're holding that we have the ability to tap into. And that's what I'm concerned about is giving us. Feel... Go ahead. And if we feel we have a legitimate interest in one of those plans, we should speak up. Otherwise, keep our powder dry. Yeah, you clearly haven't been bullied as much as I have been, because this is this is not <laughs> is this is straightforward. This is straightforward. You have this is just a step you have to do. This is performance for the sake of performance. It's not. It gives us a little bit of an edge in one arena, very small small arena, and that's it. And I admit that it's sophistry, that that's all it is. But I think it's an important thing that we need to do on a little side, I mean, a little bit on the, the side of important, not hugely on the side of important. So I feel like I'm arguing for something and I'm sounding more passionate about it than I really am. I'm just, so anyway. Okay, so um, Alan, I'll give you, the, uh, give you the last word. And I think we should probably actually get a motion on the table and try to resolve this if we can. Okay, so I'm the youngest of four boys, uh, family of four, four guys. Oldest brother is 10 years older than I am. When I was, I don't know, seven or eight years old and I wanted to join the big guys baseball uh, games, they would usually say something to me like, yeah, yeah, sure, kid, come on, come along. We'll find a place for you. And I'd end up in right field. And of course I would strike out all the time. 
And of course, they really didn't expect anything out of me. And they were just trying to be nice and maybe get some some kudos from 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 their moms or dads for letting the little squirt play. That's kind of how I feel about this now. I don't think anybody's really serious about our baseball skills, you know, because it's pretty clear we, we really don't have a lot of them because we haven't been in business very long. So I, I I don't I'm not too I don't think I don't think the big guys are gonna really give us anything in the baseball game that would allow us to succeed. I, I think they're doing what their shareholders want them to do, which is to be a successful for-profit company. And that's, I, I mean, that's that's why they exist. And, and, and I, I acknowledge that, and I think they do too. So I, I don't think this is necessarily a chummy kind of a, chummy kind of a, a, a game that will be played. I, I think it's gonna be really competitive baseball with big guys playing, who have played a lot. Thanks. Okay, Andy, you look like you might wanna say, I'll give you the last word, then, then let's get to yeah. a question. Yeah, I guess the only, my only caution with this, and I, it's something I've brought up before, is I worry that we view ourselves too much in a competitive or startup perspective and not in a public body trying to solve a problem perspective. And I just, you know, these folks, they the fact that we are scratchy right fielders that strike out a lot says a lot. And if somebody's a really good hitter and they deliver good service into our community, that's really what our responsibility is first and foremost versus being a viable competitor. And I just don't I, the, uh, this worries me. This, is, you know, it's a trend we've always had, but, and I get it, and I'm not saying that it's wrong or right. I'm just saying, you need to keep, kind of open perspectives on what it is we're trying to do. That's... Okay. Thanks, Andy. So, <clears throat> I'm going to make a motion that we, um, I'm going to make the, a, a similar motion as what the mm -hmm. business development mm -hmm. committee did. Um, not because I endorse it, but um, because that was the motion that came to us, and I can't find the original motion. Uh, hold on. Um, so I move that CV, the CV Fiber Governing Board sends a letter to the incumbent telecom companies operating in our territory indicating that we'd be willing to discuss possible cooperative projects. And can I get a second or not? Thank you. Is that, that was you, Chuck? Okay, that was seconded by Chuck. All right, uh, any further discussion? Okay, so we're ready for the vote. I, I do wanna do a roll call because I don't think that this is going to be a unanimous one. So let's start, um, I'm just gonna start from my list here. David, Healy, David Healy is an I. Greg? I. Ellen. Wait, sorry. Who was that? I'm I'm a little behind right now. That was. David was an I. Greg yep. Kelly was an I. Alan Gilbert. No. Alan Gilbert was a no. Andy Gilbert. Yay. Okay. Michael. Michael Bernbaum. Uh, yeah. Yes. <laughs> okay. John Morris. John Morris is, a, is an I. Josh Jarvis. I. Javon. I. Okay. Ken Jones. I. Jerry. Uh, Jerry's an alternate. Sorry, Jerry. Uh, Ray. No. Okay. Um, Jeremy, you're an alternate. Chuck. I. Okay, um, unless I'm missing somebody else, I'm gonna cast the final vote. I'm gonna say no, but the ayes have it, uh, nine to three, unless my math is wrong. Motion passes, who wants to draft that letter? Business development should do that. Okay, let's have the business development committee run with that then. Um, I'm gonna have to, I'm gonna be going to a meeting with, um, the Washington Select Board. I have to get on a phone call with them momentarily. 
uh, EC Fiber and we will both have representatives there to talk to them about their possible, possibly joining them or us or both. Um, yeah, Chuck? What does that do to our recording? Um, I'm gonna try to leave the recording going. Do any of you have the recording option on your GoToMeeting? Dave, do you have a uh, uh, David, do you have? I said you was going to have recording David, option. Muted. I'm breaking. You're muted, David. Okay. Um, uh, I guess he isn't muted. I don't know. Yeah, David's got um, an unusual see. icon next to his name. It's yeah, not a it's not a whole audio. Actually. He will never it's speak audio. again. He says he's, he's he says he's not going to do audio. All right. So let's see. Siobhan, I made you an organizer. Who else can I make an organizer? Michael, uh, I made you an organizer. Jeremy, did you go? Whoops. Do you want me to start recording? I think that was uh, David uh, Keeley that logged off. Maybe he's logging. Maybe he's restarting his computer. Jeremy, I wanted to make one comment before you leave. Go to meeting. <laughs> hey, quick, Michael. Jeremy, can you hear me? It's for Jeremy. He's got to hear it. You guys have lousy internet, okay, I'll so tell David's you. David's audio is not Jeremy working now. Oh, you're here. Jeremy, can you hear me? So let me say somebody uh, tell go, Jeremy. Go ahead. Weird now, Michael. I can't hear Michael. He's ready for you, Michael. The town of I Washington has the most RDOF in the in our region. We want to get we want them to join us. That's all. Say again. Okay. Michael says Washington has the most art off in our region, and we would like them to join us. Thank you, Siobhan. Yes. And I will, I will not say that after July 15th. <laughs> <laughs> uh, hey, did you guys hear me now? Yes. Yes. No. So is Philip taking over the meeting? Or David? He doesn't know that he doesn't know, but he is. Oh, there's David. Yeah, I can I had a I left and came back so the audio would work. Okay. Philip, you have the con. <laughs> All systems five by five. <laughs> So Phil, when you weren't here, uh, Jeremy suggested that I take over because you weren't going to be here. And since you're back, you're, I think you're still in charge. Uh, no, go ahead, David. I, I had the same problem you did where I completely lost audio and had to reboot. So I, I have no idea what's going on as far as the conversation. So if you do. <laughs> okay. Well, the next item on the agenda was, um, applying for PSD funding and the business development committee you know, spent a bunch of time on this last week and one of the reasons we're having this special meeting is so we can move forward and applying for that money and I'm going to let um, Ken who wrote up the memo that was attached to everybody's in the I think Ken sent yeah Ken sent that to everyone but anyway there's a short um, period for oh, this. Uh, sorry to interrupt Jeremy Hansen just said in chat one sec there's a $145 cost for the webinar about non RDOF collusion. Do we want to pay for that? I don't know if we need to have that discussion before he leaves. Sorry to derail, but. Wait, 
But that means a whole bunch of people could attend, not just one person. No, I think it's per person. I I think it's. Oh wow. Yeah, I, it, it's it's intended for members of the electric co-op National Electric Co-op Association. Um, NRCC okay. is a member of that one, and so WEC and VEC can get in there for free. They can get there's a way to get their lawyers or other associates in, so they might be able to get one or two or three of us in that way. But I think it's crazy to spend that kind of money. There's lots of documents and webinars out there already on this topic that are free. Also, so, aren't our consultants covering us for that? I mean, we paid 5,000 bucks to be a part of a consortium. That's what they do, right? We can ask them, but the, the information they posted showed that it was $145 for non-electric co-op members. We'll work on that. <laughs> yeah, I agree. It's unnecessary. I don't want to deal with that right now. I want to go to the next item on the agenda. And um, so as I was saying, um, H-966, which the governor signed on July 2nd, um, has uh, got a number of items in there that we believe, the Business Development Committee believes, we should be acting on as aggressively and as fast as we can. And so last week, Ken drafted a um, sort of a, a section by section description of what he thought our roles were, uh, could be. And I don't know if you've had a chance to look at that document, but it was pretty, it was pretty good. But we, we would like to, you know, open it up to the whole board. And I'm going to let Ken sort of lead us through the, the his thinking on um, where there are good opportunities for CV5 to advance our mission through this bill. Yeah, so we'll, we'll start at the, the most obvious piece of money. There's $800,000 to be distributed to CUDs and maybe some structures parallel to CUDs with a cap of $100,000 per. So what that means really is there's $100,000 for us. The intent of this money is to help us participate in providing emergency telecommunication services related to COVID. Um, now, I, I may not have phrased that exactly the way the legislation does, but it is that intent. And that's very, very challenging because all of these monies are supposed to be spent by December 30th. Um, and with the, and not just spent by December 30th, but actually provide um, value in addressing the COVID emergency. Now it is possible, and and you, all you folks probably have an equal, an equal uh, ability to, to estimate the probability that Congress will allocate more money for infrastructure investment. In which case, the it takes the 11 million or 11 million plus that the state has for building out and expands it a lot, and that would be very exciting, and that would say that we could use could and should use the hundred thousand to really consider how to how to do our build out more fast but but in the short term we can't necessarily put all our eggs into just that how do we build out more quickly um but rather can we respond to the emergency what can we do to respond to the emergency so tonight's agenda includes a, a three topics that are specifically related to that 100,000. One is to ask for the 100,000 from the Public Service Department, and we, we will get it. There's really no question about it. But the other two are the Business Development Committee's sort of first attempt to how we would spend the money. And it's in two pieces at this point. One is to extend the contract to Inter Isle so that they could scope out what it would be specifically to expand fixed wireless within the CV fiber district, recognizing that fixed wireless is, is something that could be installed in a small number of months so that you could get actually expanded service before December 30th. Uh, and and, and um, Mr. Goldstein sent around a note yesterday saying he could do that for $22,000. Um, which is to, to identify the specific location for installation of, of poles 
um, and the use of existing infrastructure to put the um, transmitters that will improve uh, fixed wireless service for a number of the folks in the CV fiber district. So for $22,000, he could, he could develop what he calls a budget proposal that would be the basis for us to go to the public service department and ask for money. Um, and he could do that within a month. Um, so that's a part of it that, that I think fulfills the intent of H966 and the use of the CARES funding. And the other part is for us to hire somebody. You know, we've, all, we've talked about it for months that, you know, we're, we're a great group of volunteers and I really do appreciate working with you folks, but we need somebody working 40 hours a week. Um, and to justify under the CARES piece, there are many of the activities that we can task an employee with that really does comply with the emergency response, but also a recognition. And in doing that, they'll also build capacity so that they can really get us ready for build out in 2021 on our, our main mission, the construction of fiber. So again, three, three pieces. One, let's ask for the $100,000. Two, extend the contract to inter -Isle. Um, for $22,000, and three, let's aggressively seek an employee or a contractor that would have to have an end date of December 31st um, to use the money, but therefore, hopefully, we can get a very high caliber person, maybe not use all of it, maybe use some for some other support functions for that office, um, but to, to that would then spend the $100,000, which would then would be the basis for our application to the Public Service Department. We're putting in for $100,000. This is specifically how we're going to use it. I think we'll be a leg up on the other communications union districts. Not that it's going to be competitive. There's money for all of us. But, but in terms of the rapid turnaround, we can um, request very rapid, just write us the check. We, this is how we're going to spend it. So... That's, you know, the, the basic pieces of, of the agenda this evening on those topics. And then there's, of course, a lot that we can talk about with regards to what are some of the specific activities that um, we can do. And I'll just throw out one of them. But again, part of the federal um, legislation is they really do want us to identify particular types of addresses, addresses that are with with public school students that are having trouble with connectivity to their public schools. So in case our kids can't go back to school in September or can't go back to school in October, they have a better online experience than they had during the spring. Um, so if we can identify addresses that gives us even more strength in applying to for the state $11 million to do some of our work. Um, and another subset of that group is telehealth both the medical facilities that provide telehealth services to their patients, but also I think some of the patients, the chronic patients that can be identified today, if we can get them better connectivity so that they can truly participate in remote health activities, that really, really meets the, what the federal government um, um, considered in providing these funds and therefore will give the state great confidence in saying yes, you, Central Vermont Fiber, deserve this money because no way is anyone going to challenge its use. So those are some of the details of what could happen. But again, the three parts, 100000 from public service, 22000 to inter -aisle, the remaining 78000 to support a, a contractor and the services for that contractor between an early start date and December 31st. Whew. Alan. So, Ken, if that's not a motion, I would like to make a motion so at least we have something on the floor for discussion. Um, it's You want to do one at a time? Can we do one at a time? I, I would do all three myself, but um, just because I think they're interrelated in a way that makes sense. I second the motion. This is Jerry. Okay, let's have a and, discussion. And, and just a second, Jeremy, Matt, for the minutes, I think you can use that summary that Ken had at the very end, those three big numbers, uh, applying for the 
for the money from the public service department, uh, hiring inner aisle, and then finding a contractor who will do the work for us. And I can't remember how much money was attached to each, but that's that's how I envision the motion. If 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 I have it here, I took it down. Twenty two thousand okay. for inter aisle and seventy eight thousand for to, to hire a contractor or employee and to provide it. support for that person. Sounds good. Michael. Um, I think we might, I think 60,000, 10,000 a month or a little more than 10,000 a month because there'll be less time than that would be still get a very high quality contractor. Um, and that would leave us another 18,000 to play with. I think there are a lot of good things we can come up with in the next, yep. before the next <laughs> meeting on how to spend that money. Um, because at one point, I, I guess I guess it's no secret to Fred that we were thinking of paying him forty thousand to do what he's offered to do for twenty two, and so that the eighteen thousand is that difference right there, um, and I'm not I'm not going to suggest what we can do with it. I'm sure we're going to come up with like twelve ideas and then we can vote on it next time. Um, and we can we state it as not to exceed? Sure. And that way we're not, not dedicating the full amount. Yes, and and and. I wanted to add a couple things. Uh, first of all, um, just to be clear, we're talking about a temporary position that expires at the end of this this period, um, December 30th, not even December 31st. And um, what was the other thing I was gonna say? I lost my train of thought. Um, I'll come back to you and we'll go to someone else. Okay. Any other discussion? Andy. Yeah, I just supporting Michael a little bit there because I'm I have a back tick nervousness about our books right now. Anyways, in terms of some of the obligations and grant needs and miscellaneous expenses and commitments and where we are and and other things, it would be helpful to have some flexibility and use some of that money for meeting other needs. So that's all. Greg. Yeah. So. Uh, not sure if it's part of this motion, but we would need to define the responsibilities and our uh, desired outcome in, for the consultant. It's not so just the, hiring a consultant. What, right. What's the, the objective? The uh, material that the Business Development Committee, uh, Ken and I sent out last week, has a job description and all the other stuff in it. And it certainly isn't the final piece of work, but uh, it definitely you have something to start with if you want to kick it around and crack changes on it or whatever, please do that. Um, so we can, I think, you know, I don't know what it's going to take to get the money timing, but I think we ought to be advertising or recruiting right now. Um, that's my two cents. Anybody else? Uh, Alan. Can I, okay. I, I just wanted to make clear, uh, Michael, you would refer to somebody coming in, in in coming into a position which to me means hiring staff and it sounds to me what we really want the person to do this number three action is we want to find a contractor who will work for uh, right. maybe a defined period of time with a divine with a with a very defined uh, purpose and goal is that that's what you mean right that's what we said at the business development committee and i just didn't that. okay I, I just wanted to make clear that's all <clears throat> thanks Michael. Um, I just want to comment that the Department of Public Service is going to, is in overdrive already. They want to get these opportunities out there because this money has to be spent really quickly. And it's going to take a lot of time gathering materials, gathering contractors to build things, just doing designing. And um, so the same applies to Fred doing his work and, and a few of us have been in dialogue with him today and yesterday about accelerating getting that done because we have to be able to tell the department what we want to do before we can even get the funds to do it. And so we're going to need a lot of this information early. And that applies to all the different projects, all of these different things that are coming up. There's going to be a land rush from lots of providers, including the big guys. 
to take the bunch of this money. And so we need to get it figured out fast because it, it is sort of first come first serve. The, the commissioner will be looking to get stuff to community organizations, but you know, they need to, they have to be sure the money gets spent or they lose it. And so yep. that's the point. Ken. Yeah, just to, to put a finer point on that, during the last telecom advisory board meeting, um, Clay Purvis said he 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 contemplated or or considers to get the eleven million dollars out the door by August first. Um, so so I, I haven't yet seen whether they're going to put out that, that that's the same kind of RFP they put out every year for the connectivity funds. Um, but he, as I said, he in that public meeting said he imagines getting those those proposals in and decisions made by August 1st. That's that. So that's a reason why when talking to Fred about getting our proposal together within a month is necessary. And, and as I say, he said he can do well, that. You're basically saying in two weeks. That's right. Yeah, but I also know what, yeah, I also know how hard that is. As you folks might know, I'm trying to spend $125 million in five days and um, <laughs> uh, it, we're not gonna be able to do it. Yeah. Uh, any further discussion on this? I, I just wanna say on the um, on the hiring of somebody, I don't know if we want the whole board involved in that, but anyway, we can talk about that later. Um, but you should review the, the, the draft position description I have and you should also understand what the uh, the the expenditure of the money is restricted to. So it's a pretty tight tight thing. But um, I think you know if there's no further discussion, I think we can go to a vote on this. Seeing none, I will take the vote. Um, is there anybody opposed to this? Seeing no, Jeremy, it's a unanimous vote on the three items. So, David, thank you, David. Is it the business development committee's responsibility to follow through on the all three pieces? I, I would say yes, but anybody want to clarify that? Is that in the motion anywhere? No, it was not. No. Okay, so let's it's just that we will do it. So I can I go with that. It's, I, I think it's motion. the business development. Oh, sorry, David. Go ahead. I'm looking for a new motion. Barry? A uh, motion that the Business Development Committee follow through on what was just voted. <laughs> which is that we pursue which is that we pursue this hundred thousand dollars and and allocate it appropriately. Any second? I second. Any discussion? Wait, I missed that. Who was that? Greg. 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 Okay, thanks, Greg. Any discussion? All right. All those in favor? Anybody opposed to that? Aye. Aye, aye, aye. Okay. Unanimous, unanimous Jeremy. Um, I think that's all the items on the agenda. Well, I added one. Oh, you did? Yes. Sorry, Ken. And it's actually a little bit related. Yeah, I think I think we are in agreement that seventy-eight thousand oh, yeah. dollars is more more than an individual deserves. Um, so, what would you do with an extra, let's say, eighteen thousand dollars? But but the the item on the agenda is there's a five hundred thousand dollars available to the public service department for doing emergency planning. So I would like to at least plant the seed in all of our heads about if we think about what our organization needs over the next six months, um, especially, especially, but not, not exclusively, but especially if, if we can help with emergency response to COVID. Um, is there something that you would call planning that we might work with the other CUDs? And I know Evan Carlson has also been given this charge um, to consider whether the CUDs can work 
with the public service department to say we will participate in this activity you give us some money of course so that the more local boots on the ground folks uh boots on the ground people us can participate in this activity so you really can get some things done i i don't have firm ideas at this point but but um but again plant the seed among us can we participate with other cuds this, you know, again, another, it's another, let's say another $50,000 for us to do some, some planning work that really strengthens our understanding of telecommunication needs among our clients. Great. Yes, one idea I would put forth is doing poll surveys. It allows you to really be much more accurate in the construct, in the, uh, construction budget and also know really where you can go and where you can't go. Josh? Uh, what about the idea of uh, either, you know, contacting um, school boards in their areas or um, actually doing uh, particular surveys uh, to try to identify um, those uh, school-aged children that were kind of earlier that may not be able to access uh, their school systems where they need to, you know, things like that might be a really good way to show them and help in this emergency situation. I didn't ask Josh to set me up for this, but I'll, I'll respond to that because this week I allocated every underserved premises from the 911 database to every school district in every town. And I've drafted a letter that I think are a call. I mean, the question for me is whether the superintendents are the appropriate people to go to, or is it the actual principal in the school? And, um, but I now have all the data for every address. Now, what we need the schools to do is say, yeah, this, there's a kid at this address that doesn't have service. And then we can tell the public service department, hey, we have a hundred people here and we're gonna, our, our Wi-Fi proposal will, a fixed wireless proposal will serve these people. Um, I don't know if the school districts can do that because of FERPA. So th this uh, this topic has been raised, and and um, there are some school districts that have done it, but they don't make it a public document. So we would need a, a non disclosure, some sort of non disclosure that they can provide us the information that's held within a very tight orbit. But you're right. This is one of the reasons why the state gave up on it because it can't be public. And the, um, the, other, the other piece of that in our proposal for the fixed wireless money, we can just say, we're gonna serve a hundred students. We don't have to tell them where they are even. I, I would also add telehealth to that because well, I, 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 for $50,000, we can do that kind of outreach. I think anybody underserved needs telehealth. So that's an easy one to me. <laughs> Convince them of that. But we we could look at demographics. You know, we 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 could make a a, a reasoned argument for that. Oh yeah, I think so too. Siobhan, did you say the school the schools themselves are the best people to go to? No, because they're they're not going to be able to give you. I think you're probably going to be better off with the the district supervisors. Okay. I, let me, I agree. Let me I, ask Frank, but I yeah, think it's yeah. going to be district supervisors. And yeah. they are involved in this discussion more closely than the principals. The principals are overwhelmed with trying to get ready for the school year, um, but I think the superintendents are aware of this discussion. Okay. So I, I, I realized in doing this work, I didn't know that Cabot was part of Plainfield and, and Marshfield <laughs> and Danville and somebody else. I mean, what a weird hey, school. That's because your kids are grown now. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, I, I have all the data. And so to the extent that we can move on this, Ken, you want to work on this with me? I can do it. Or the new, or the new manager can do it. But I think we need it for the, for the applying for the fixed wireless money. We do. So, Michael. Um, so um, first I want, I want to ask Ken a question, and then I want to talk about the eighteen thousand. Um, I still don't, and I'm not sure anybody really understands 
what that $500,000 planning grant is for because by the time the plan is complete, the period they're planning for has ended. And it it's just goofy. It, there needs to be some way to absolutely accelerate it so it can be made useful. Um, I'm not convinced it's gonna be over, but let's go with that. <laughs> oh, no, no, but that, that's not the problem. The problem is that the US Treasury says all this has to be used and utilized by December 30th, or they're gonna claw back the money. So it's not a question of whether it's practical for use or not, it's these rules. Maybe those rules will change, who knows? Um, all right, so I'll drop that. And on the $18,000, I was just thinking, we're, we're talking about um, contracting with an individual to, to do things for us. And I really support that. We could use that $18,000 for contracting with a low skilled person to work on the fixed wireless project or to train somebody, maybe in several people, you know, high school kids, who knows? Um, we could consider it as a possible salary for, or I don't know, whatever. So compensation for people who will help um, knock on doors, deploy stuff, help Fred running around okay. choosing pole sites. There may be some use that way. Just a thought. Yeah. No, I agree with that. I think it was about, I mean, we probably even need somebody to set up our bookkeeping a little bit better. We need, you know, some outreach on our website. We need the door knockers things. I mean, just even publicity. We're not doing great at this at all. I think Ray is Ray is leading the pack when it comes to using Front Porch Forum. No, and actually Jeremy. Jeremy puts all the minutes up on Front Porch Forum in Marshfield, a plain field. Where are you? Plainfield. <laughs> You're Marshfield, I know. Um, you, in any event, is, I think the the committee will come back and say, this is what we think we ought to be doing with that money because there's a lot of needs. Um, and of David, course- can I ask a question in there, please? Yes. And I, I don't know exactly who this question is to, maybe it's to Ken, but when we talk about money that needs to be spent, there, there there's a difference between the money being obligated and the money being spent. Are we talking about money being obligated? No, it's got to be spent. Oh, spent. Not, not to wow. be spent. This is yeah. Holy our, mackerel! Okay. Right, we could buy a changes. truck, an emergency services truck. Right. An Put education. Put wire on it. <laughs> we'll start stringing the wire. That's our emergency plan. All right. Um, any other? We were on. Uh, Ken, do you have any more on that? Oh, no, this is this was a Josh's item. We started with Josh anyway. Um, should we go into the round table so we can have this more, a little more organized? <laughs> I think that there was approval of the minutes as an agenda item. Oh, I didn't see that. <laughs> okay, approval of the minutes from the January, 20, uh, June 23rd, we can't even know. You know, I have to say this COVID thing, <laughs> which <laughs> <good> month is it? <laughs> so- Second. Second on that. All right. Any discussion on the minutes from June? So, so that was a motion by David, seconded by Siobhan, to approve yes. the minutes. Yes. Okay. Any discussion? Seeing no, no, so I assume everybody's a yes on this one. Yep. All right. The unanimous on that, Jeremy. Ray's got his hand up. Oh, oh no, he doesn't Ray. have his hand up. Never mind. <laughs> okay, I'm gonna I'm gonna go around the table here. Uh, Michael Grand Bronx, you're on top. Um, we have a great secretary. We do. I Thanks. Have to... <laughs> Bill, I'll pass. Ron, Ray, I want to see you do jazz hands. <laughs> Woo! All right, that's I'm good. Thanks, guys. Greg. We're one step closer, slow, steady progress. Alan? Yeah, this has been one of the worst Zoom connections I've had. So I've, I've been missing some of the stuff, which just reinforces 
my desire to try and move as fast as we can because I don't have the slowest connection in the world, certainly don't have the fastest, but people are even worse off than me, and that's pretty bad. Uh, it's amazing to me, we've been at this meeting for what, an hour and 15 minutes, and we've gone through so much stuff of real substance. We're talking about real money that's that's up there and, you know, a number of digits, and uh, it great, it's great. It just feels great, the, the pace and the uh, kind of stuff we're talking about. Andy. Uh, just, yeah, general thanks, Ken. That was nice package you put together um, and moving fast on this. So it was great. It's awesome. John? Morris? Hi, hey, Josh? I'm just really happy with uh, the connection of the conversation. Ken? Yeah. Um, I don't. I know this is a special meeting with uh, focus on this emergency stuff, but uh, but I, and I I'll just say it. I, I'm, it's not going to be surprising to anybody, but to keep moving on our overall work in terms of the the what do we call it the pilot build and I forget what color it is, but you know mm -hmm. that that first build to really think about when it's time to do outreach to some of those potential customers and and find um, some of the dollars that will help support move that forward we, we need to keep that right on the front burner because we want to we do want to go to vita uh, with a package fairly soon so let's you know the next meeting let's let's shift that focus to make sure we're we're really moving forward on that particular project if that's the one we want to go for jerry yeah um i i the one thing that really jumps out at me, two things jump out at me. One, the incredible amount of work that's been going on and the things are moving so fast. And as folks have said, there's real money involved and that's fantastic. I'm a little concerned that, did we barely make a quorum today? I, I, I'm, 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 a, I'm a little, little concerned about the uh, participation. I'm surprised because we've had good participation um, when we were having our regular meetings, you know, at the school at Berlin. Um, I'm just a little concerned about the participation. Yeah. Uh, I just 15, want to throw that out there. 15 people on. Okay, Ray. Uh, good meeting, good work, uh, business development community, Ken Jones. Um, I like the idea of uh, the mobile service truck. What I, in the <laughs> conceptual thing and the reason I say that is that I think that we need to take some of this hundred thousand dollars and actually deliver something to somebody whether it's tablets whether it's Wi-Fi some really kind of connectivity um, and uh, we're gonna find out real soon now that schools aren't going to open things aren't going to work and we need to be there we'll have some dollars I think to do something sounds good uh, Jeremy Matt. Ask. Chuck. Nothing tonight. Thank you, everyone. Ooh, geez, Chuck. Anyway, this has um, been a great meeting. I there's so many different things going on. Um, I just want to remind everybody in our Northern Border Regional Commission grant application, we have money in there for a manager too. So if this person that we get the contractor for this next month works out, we hopefully will have some money to keep them going. So that's me. Um, and I'll entertain a motion to adjourn. Second. So move. <laughs> Those in favor. <laughs> that's a little backwards, Siobhan. <laughs> no, no, that's just my internet. It was just a little faster than you guys. Oh, okay. So anyway, I was a motion mater. Okay, Jeremy, thank you. Okay. All right, good night, everybody. Good night, everyone. Bye. Hey, thanks a lot. Thanks a lot for being available. Take care. Bye bye. Thank you.